turn the lights on Let's take a shot Explore the new world I'm fired up, fired up, fired up. I'm ready to go I'm rising up BIM Object Live, Malmö, Sweden, 2017. It's great to see all of you here. You are our best customers. You know why? Because you're here. That also makes you the leaders of this transformation we are just now addressing. I have a big why here, and I, I know why you're here. You want to new, see new technology. You want to see new ways of analyzing data, getting qualified leads. Of course, to beat your competition, to get into new markets, to get in what we call the digital decision process, somebody calls BIM. I know why you're here. But there is a thing, there is a bigger why, why we all have to do this. And I want to start with that. Even if a lot of things you will see in the conference will be about return on investment, growing the business, cutting costs, and improving processes. We have a lot of problems in this world. One of them is waste. Only in Europe, we produce 830 million tons of construction waste every year. 830 million tons. And why? Bad planning. There is a way to do this better. When things are coming to the construction site and it doesn't fit, or you're moving around the same goods on the site seven times until you find the right place for the component or the window, whatever it is. We have to help, everybody have to help to reduce the waste. Carbon, what everybody's talking about, and I think we already see the effects of global warming. Our industry, is the one that consumes the most of the world's or the planet's resources. And when it comes to carbon, we are 40% of everything that is emitted into our world. That also have to change. It's a huge risk to work in the construction industry. From a business, it's very hard. It's very hard to work in the construction industry. It's very dangerous. You're actually building something out in the real world. There is ways to change this and minimizing these risks. And we will talk about that later. Risk is also connected to costs. Why do we see construction projects all the time overrunning costs? Why do we accept this? It's always double or something. Why, why is this happening all the time? We have all the technology, all the tools to use this, but maybe we're doing something wrong. It's time to take digitalization seriously and use this technology and actually change our processes. Because just taking technology and putting it on an old process will get a very little change. And you still have the fragmentation of data and the problem we, we see today in the construction industry. Time. Always late. Why don't we look in the shipyard industry, automotive industry, aerospace industry, how they build buildings? Construction sites need to get into becoming assembly places, not where you build something. Building something you can do in a factory, and then you can just get the stuff out in the right time. This is modularization, industrialization, which all the other industries, maybe except farming, have already done. This needs also to change, and with digitalization, we can do it. One thing what you should be very aware of when you and your management, or if you are management, make your digital strategy, everything will be digital. Every process, everything that in our world can be done by a computer will be done by a computer. You might not like it. You say that, oh, then jobs will disappear and so on. It will happen. Unfortunately, or fortunately. But anything that you can have an algorithm or a software do instead of a human is so much more effective. There is no unions. 
you can scale it, you can transport it, and you can measure everything what is happening. So when you're thinking about your own company and what you're doing, put these things on everything. Can I rationalize this? Can I industrialize this? Can I change this? And how can I make it digital? Because if you can make it digital, you can actually make it much more efficient. We will have BCG on the stage later. And there was a report. If you haven't read it, read it. Uh, good news. I spent 30 years of my life trying to change this industry. And I'm really happy to see that in the next 10 years, it will actually change. Of course, there have been an evolution. We have gone from everything from the small personal computer uh, using AutoCAD and making lines into making BIM. So it's a big change, but there have to be much, much more. And in the center of everything is information. Information is the key to get everything done. Because information, if it's trustworthy, if it's secure, you know that you can increase your knowledge about a product or a material, and you know that things will be right. So together, of course, saving a trillion means that somebody will own some money too. So let's do that together. And there's no way turning back now. So Beam Object is a part of this revolution, but you have everything from artificial intelligence, big data, what we do with cloud, you will have 3D scanning, you will have 3D uh, total stations with laser showing you on the construction site what to do, and so on. Things are moving so fast now, there's nothing stopping it. And then we haven't even talked about Internet of Things, which is another side of everything. So, information. One thing which has been bugging us for a very long time has been how to get sustainability environmental data into our platform. These have been very, very complex. We have worked a lot with different research. We tried different things, but we wanted to find the right way of doing it. Because the problem is, if you don't have the right information going into the model, you cannot run any clever analytics. You are guessing. And with sustainability, we don't want to guess. We want to have the right thing. So I'm really proud to announce a new partnership with an Italian company. So if we can have on stage Fed spin-off, you will get a big microphone. Thank you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so explain a little bit what we will do together. Yeah, thank you, everybody. I'm very glad to join this uh, amazing project and um, amazing step forward towards a much more sustainable built environment. Well, uh, um, we would like to inform you where, uh, where is the starting point of this, uh, um, of this um, strategy. So we start typically from environmental sustainability assessment tools based on standards and protocols uh, sometimes uh, uh, made uh, uh, based on uh, very, very simplified assumptions and based on very qualitative data sources. But if we focus uh, on uh, the product uh, stage and sometimes if we focus on the scale of the product, we have uh, much more reliable methods and techniques to assess the environmental performances uh, of uh, products. These techniques are based on uh, life cycle assessment where we are able, through which we are able to uh, quantify in a very precise and trusted uh, way the environmental loads of a product. Of course, if we include the outcomes of uh, an LCA into a certified documents, we will get what, we what is called now environmental declarations. Uh, the best practice of environmental declarations is the APD, Environmental Product Declaration. And uh, this kind of uh, certification is becoming much more and much more adopted in national and international institutions. For instance, we have a strong suggestion by the European community for uh, construction product regulations, which uh, strongly force manufacturers and designers to adopt APD, because it's the only way to have certified data on the environment. It's the only way to have the footprint, the environmental footprint of uh, of the product that the designer has to choose. So that's why we decided, um, together with the BIM object, to create a proper data set, including 
the um, environmental data coming from the APD. Because in this way, we will be able to implement a complete digital process where we start from trusted uh, information on the environment, on the environmental performances, and we let them available to the designers. In this way, the designers is able to manage a huge amount of environmental data in the form of objects, in the form of, of uh, building information objects. In this way, the designer will be able to tune, to select as a selective parameter um, and, um, as the environmental performances and decide which will be the best environmental performance of his building information model. Okay. Um, What's the, uh, the real innovation? The real innovation is that we introduce a new degree of freedom in the design, which is based on trustly environmental performances. And in this way, we are able uh, to manage and of course to minimize the overall environmental impact of a building and uh, start thinking in a way that we can design for sustainability, okay? Based on very, very trusted environmental data. Okay, thank you. I hope you will enjoy this strategy and this project. Thank you. So to do this, you need drivers of change. What is the, our drivers of change? This is our user base. The architects, engineers, designers, construction firms that today are using our community. We passed half a million in the summer, and it's, it's kind of exploding. Um, when we went on the stock market, we actually had 22,000 users, and now we are 550,000 all over the world. And you can just imagine if you add your environmental data to your product, you actually expose them for more than half a million professional users. They will be able to utilize and use this immediately. And this is my message to you. If you want to know the future of the internet and see how things are going, look at the consumer industry. So the professional industry, the B2B, is always sliding a little bit behind. Everything on the internet is going platform. Everything. If you look at your kids, they're using Snapchat. It's a platform. Facebook, they don't use it anymore because it's old, but it's still a platform. WhatsApp, platform, et cetera, et cetera. Instagram, platform. They actually don't use internet, they use platforms. The same will happen or is already happening because the users want to have what they expect when they go to somewhere. If they want to download information to their Revit or Archicad or whatever they're using, they need it to know that it's standardized, it's working, it has the right file format, it will not crash their model, etc. They need trust and they go to one place. So internet is becoming a place of power hubs, which I'm sorry to tell you, it doesn't matter what your revenue is, you can't beat a platform because a platform is in the thousands. So it carries thousands of manufacturers or 10,000 of manufacturers. There's no way you can beat it. And of course, this, the users is a lot the center of our universe. It's for the users we are building the integrated apps we're helping you guys digitize your components so you get specified, you get visible, you get integrated into the processes. And since the acquisition of Autodesk Seek the 17th of January, we had a tremendous increase in the usage of our platform. And especially on the large design firms. You might have seen this before, but the fact is today, 97 out of the top 100 architects are using our platform. And in average, around 130 individual users per firm. The bigger firm, five, 600 users. Going over to the design and engineering firms, 95 out of 100, more or less the same. A little bit lower on the average user, it's around 110 individual users on each firm. In construction, it becomes a little bit more complicated because there is a country called China, and we have some Chinese friends here also today. And since there is a great firewall of China, today it's not very easy to use and register our platform because they happen to not like something called Google. 
and we use a lot of Google technology on our platform. So anyway, excluding China out of this picture, 70 out of 80 uh, firms are using our technology. The amount of individual users are much lower. So it's around 30 individual users. So it's a big change and big difference. But we see where the trend is going, and it's going very, very fast. In Europe, we have more or less every single firm using our technology. So what are we doing? We take technology, we take data, we put it in a context when it will become information. And what happens now with your product information, and you will see it during these days, we're really connecting the dots. There is new stuff coming. It's not only about getting your Revit files into Revit. That's a small part of the whole information change. You will see new devices, everything from smartphones, augmented reality, virtual reality, e-commerce. You will see so many different type of platforms that needs your information. And in, we live in the information age. And that's where the power is. It's about getting the people who specify and work with your products the right information at the right time. So this is our mission, connecting it all together. Because the more connectivity we build for you, the faster you can deploy your product information. So we had a plan for many years ago. We started already in 2012 to build this so-called direct integration into the BIM software. And that was basically the, the first step into allowing the user to have a more direct connection with what Ben O'Donnell will talk later about what is a web service. But we wanted to make it easier for the user to, to get the data. We wanted them to have updating capabilities, checking versions from the server to the, to the uh, BIM software. And of course, we also wanted to solve something called level of information. So if you want to have more information in the objects later on in the process, you could actually downstream and send more data into your objects. So you didn't get everything at the beginning. And if you have different languages, you can change and so on. So full integration. So we made a decision now, because we have been quite successful. So the Revit app uh, have been one of the most downloaded in Autodesk history. Uh, AutoCAD app, ArchiCAD app, and the SketchUp app, around 150,000 downloads for these apps. Uh, what happened in the last 6 to 12 months is that a lot of software vendors came to us and said, hey, please build an app for us too. I said, sorry, guys, we, we don't have resources to do that. And by the way, the apps are free. so We can give you the source code, or we can help you build it. So what you see in Vectorworks today is totally integrated. In Vectorworks, the BeamObit app is in the service package. The user just click on it and it's there. The same we have now with Altplan, soon with Altplan, uh, and also ArcLine. So there's some big news today. We made a decision to give away this as free source code. And why do we do that? So again, we want to connect all the dots. We don't want to be slowing anything down. So if there is any other software vendor or calculation software, anybody who can enjoy to use this, uh, the build a BIM object app, you can get the free source code. If you are a big design firm, maybe you have the problem that you're not allowed to install apps. Um, that will be solved now. You get the source code. If you are a manufacturer and you have a lot of calculation tools, you have a lot of other tools you would like to get integrated with the designers, you can mix that now with our app. You can combine these things. And you are free to remove st stuff you don't like. You can add stuff you like and, and put your own things in. And of course, you can do use this app so it only can use your content. It's up to you. Now it's free source code. The only thing is you need to apply. So just apply on the developer side, because we won't give this to our competitors. Which, by the way, from day on, they used to be five years behind us. And I think after today, we will leave them back in the Stone Age, which is what I like. There is another thing which is very important. So free source code on the apps, that's good. Yeah? 
that will make more people use the technology, use the community, use the product information. But you need to do something else. And I'm really proud that such a small company, we're only 140 employees, but we managed to do what the big guys are doing. We have built something called API to our full platform. And this might sound a little bit techy and what is application programming interface. But think about it like this. Computers can speak to computers. An e-commerce site can go in and query our server and say, hey, I need information about this and this and this. And then it will respond back. No file transfer. This is seamless data integration between different type of applications, protocols. You all have phones. So I don't dare to say iPhone when we have Samsung here. So you have your Samsung phone. And all the apps, all the communication between the app and whatever tool is web services. These are standards today. But in the BIM area, we haven't utilized this. And for me, that is really weird. So with the API, we are now opening up for you as a manufacturers, we can have retailers building their own e-commerce site based on the API, solution providers like Solar, Dolls, etc., have the ability to share information together with us because we know that the supply chain have exactly the same problem with information and getting the right information. So really, API is like opening up Pandora's box. We are allowing information sharing with any kind of solution, fabrication or whatever. And if you happen to come to my workshop tomorrow, I will do it two times, I will show you the first API, and our developers did this in one day with Microsoft in Hungary. We have connected the whole BIM Analytics engine through API to something called Microsoft Power BI. It's a business intelligence tool because we know you guys want to have new things in BIM Analytics all the time, and we can't keep up with you. You want more, more, more. And our data is growing and growing and growing. So we had to do something, and this is the answer. API is the answer. And now you can run that, and you can build any dashboard you like. You can build it any way. You can drill through the data, do any analytics you want, but you do it in a Microsoft application, but with the API connecting to the data. So Ben will speak a little bit more about that, and we will talk about it during the workshops. So today, we are really happy that we, we are growing so fast because, of course, our aim is world domination, and I'm not humble, I, I say that. But, of course, we're looking now at taking the next leap. We're going to be 100 times bigger than the competition, not 10 times, 100 times than the second biggest competitor. If we look at the downloads, they have grown every year factor three. So you can't even see this small, but this was the first year of BIM Object. We have 53,310 downloads, and we were proud of every single one. Then 163, 439, 1.2, we are looking at 10 million downloads this year. 10 million. So 10 million of your components will go into products, go into different models, will be specified, integrated in a building. And I know you want immediate return on investment, but you know also that these things take time. A building project is over many years. So what you see today is probably that, but that it will be a little bit years to come. So what is our prediction? And I think when you see these numbers, you also understand that Beam Object is moving into the big data analytics. We are moving into business intelligence. We are really also moving potentially into AI. Because this is the prediction. If it, could, it continues with a factor three, 2020, we will have 273 million downloads on our site. And many of those will be your products. You will have so much qualified leads, you have to start to think about human resources and start to hire young people who understand business intelligence and information management 
And you have to start to think differently. If you want to be the leader of your industry, if you want to be Kodak, you don't need to do anything. Then it will happen by itself. So one of our newest platforms, which we are doing in our own Google type of style, we release things, we do more components, we release it, and we, we allow it to be free. This is BIM Supply. And BIM Supply is really the things that, yeah, makes me go up every morning. And this is real true innovation. We have integrated this, so of course it's built together with Autodesk on a platform called Forge, so we're using a lot of their components. But the beauty with this technology is that we can partially integrate it into our platform. And already today, you can see that everything which is not a 3D configuration built with BIM script, it actually is using Spaces. And Spaces is quite amazing because Spaces is a way to build up a 3D model, a BIM model. You just take Revit and you drop it on our, on our web browser, and then you can share it with anyone. Nobody needs a software. You run it within a web browser. And the beauty with this is it's much less complicated than a BIM software, and it's free. And you can communicate this with anyone. And you have basically 10 buttons. That's what you need to have. But it's a full B model. The full model hierarchy is there. All the connections back to the products, all the metadata properties are there. And you will see when Ben comes on stage very shortly how we are taking the next step with BIM Supply. And it's really, really exciting. And I'm going to leave that for him. I'm not going to take his presentation. So. But you can utilize this today. It already works. So you can build what we call showcases. You can build solutions, assemblies. And it's so much easier for the designer to understand what do they get. They can preview everything on a web browser, and then they can download. So it really makes a lot of sense. So we are bragging about and bitching about all the time how we tell you to industrialize and how we tell the construction industry to industrialize, change their processes, becoming more and more efficient. So uh, is Beam Object doing this also? Of course we are, all the time. Everything we can automate, we will automate. There is no other way. So when it comes to the creation of content, this has been a hassle. I mean, we based all our first developments and digitalization on our knowledge. And we hired the best people in the industry for Archicad, Revit, and so on. And we have hundreds of people working with this. But we also realized that we have to do something. We have to find better processes. Processes where there is less human interaction. I'm sorry to bitch on humanity, but this is the thing. Computers are better at information management. So what we are doing now is that we are connecting several mechanical CAD software directly to our cloud solution. And this is what's called BIM script and LENA. I will not be very lengthy with this, but this makes everything happen automatically. Every file format it creates have the same metadata because it's the cloud service and the development tool that creates it. There is not so much need anymore for QA. You don't need to QA because it's not the human who did it. And computers, if the software works, they don't make mistakes. So what we will release, and the real big presentation of this will be in Autodesk University in Las Vegas in a month, that we today have the technology for something called Rhinoceros 3D or Rhino 3D. This is the latest software from Autodesk for CAD CAM, or what you have heard about the, the maker movement, that everybody will 3D print everything. And that might happen. And this software is called Fusion 360. It's free still, I think, for students and for makers or hobbyists, and is really taking on. And the beauty with this is that we can create an unbroken information flow from the PDM, PLM, mechanical CAD, prototyping, 3D printing, and then how to go to market. You just add the Lena app on top of Fusion. You build your script where the script handles the marketing configuration, the sales configuration, the marketing data, and it automatically builds every BIM object you will ever need. And what we released, yeah, so we're going to have 1,000 of these developers. So what we released just for some weeks ago, that as a part of this process, we also create an SDL format. 
And yes, it's not your spare parts. This is a scalable model for architects and designers to go back to the basics and actually make models. But you don't even need a software. You can print it from the web browser because our development tools have done the SDL automatically. And when Marek and later on Damon will come up, you will hear everything about AR and VR. And you know, computers some, sometimes can be tricky because we have different file formats for everything. I don't really know why we do that, but different devices need different type of geometry in different ways, and you need to texture it in different ways and so on. So also the new format within the BIM script process also generates a format for AR and VR. Why is this important? This is important because your information, the more you make it available for a bigger audience, the more you will win. And new tools are coming. So what are BIM objects disrupting today? We are disrupting the digital, or we are building the digital product catalog. Peter, our CMO, will come up later and talk about inbound e marketing. What is this inbound market and integrated inbound market? This is also what we are disrupting today. We are soon becoming the digital expo. It's open 24-7, every day, even at Christmas, Bimobic doesn't close. And you have an audience which is bigger than the German exhibition Bau. And we are slowly moving in into the digital supply chain. Internally, we call it Alibaba BIM, but that's just internally. So our mantra, design, connect, supply. This is what we're working on every day. There is another thing. You might remember that we bought a domain for some years ago. Called BIM.com. Everybody has been wondering, what are they planning with BIM.com? And today I will tell you what we're going to plan with BIM.com. So hereby we are telling that we will start a new business division called BIM.com, where it will be a new platform for cloud application store. This means that the community we have, and this will happen when the community is about 1 million users, this is starting now. It will be a separate entity of BIM Object. So already BIM.com incorporated is started in the US. And this is ability, what you can do on this, you can actually take your technical application, your calculation tools, whatever application you have, and post it on BIM.com. So it will be a delivery mechanism. It's a cloud application uh, store for, you can give it away for free, but then you have to pay some publishing fee but you can also sell applications. And we see more and more cloud platforms offering a lot of technology to developers, but nobody shapes a go-to-market strategy for them. There is not a single place to do this. And our ambition is to be that single gateway where users will be able to buy their cloud applications, whatever it is, and they can integrate that, and they will have one gateway uh, to run um, their tools in. So, BIM Object is getting there. We are now scaling it, we're taking the actions, we have the developers, the technology to become, when you think about building material, building products, you think BIM Object. And I'm really, when I'm flying around the world, I get an architect next to me, it's amazing, he knows who is BIM object. If you go to Korea, they know who is BIM object. So it's really cool. We got in really far in this uh, six years. And our ambition with BIM.com is to be the same. We want to be the central gateway for cloud BIM application. Thank you.